Hello students, welcome to the lecture on risk management and after the lecture, we will be able to learn the following objectives. Explain management of risk, describe risk financing techniques, understanding the enterprise risk management, discuss on risk management information system, explain risk management agency. Let's start with to think of risk in predominantly negative terms as something to be avoided or as a threat that we hope will not materialize. In the investment world, however, risk is inseparable from performance and rather than being desirable or undesirable is simply necessary. Understanding risk is one of the most important parts of a financial education. A common definition for investment risk is deviation from an expected outcome. We can express this deviation in absolute terms or relative to something else like a market benchmark. Deviation can be positive or negative and it relates to the idea of no pain, no gain to achieve higher returns in the long run. Have to accept more short-term volatility. Risk in insurance terms is the possibility of a loss or other adverse event that has the potential to interfere with the organization's ability to fulfill its mandate and for which insurance claim may be submitted. Risk management is a process of identifying risk issues and the options for controlling them, commissioning a risk assessment, reviewing the results and selecting amongst the excess objects to best meet the goals. The purpose of risk analysis is to help managers better understand the risk and opportunities they face and to evaluate the option available for their control. Risk Management Once you understand how the financial markets work, it's important to learn about the risks to your money and ways to minimize these risks when you start to trade. Many professional traders and companies evaluate their trading risks by looking at the volatility of a market that is, the rate at which prices move up and down. They sometimes use a technique called value at risk or VAR analysis in which they use volatility to estimate the maximum amount of money they could lose on a given day. With this in mind, they trade in a way that limits their risks. It isn't necessary to carry out complex VAR calculations in order to trade successfully but it is important to understand how volatility can affect your money. Generally, in a market that is highly volatile, prices can move sharply, up or down, and in a short period of time. It is considered riskier to bet on such a market, as your losses could be high if the prices go against you. However, if a market moves in your favour, your gains could be higher than if you put the same money on a less volatile market. In short, riskier trades have the potential to provide greater rewards, but also greater losses. Nobody can know for certain how the markets will move, so you should never trade with money you do not have or money you cannot afford to lose. A good way to minimize the amount of money you could lose on a trade is to use a stop order. This means you state the price at which the trade should automatically close if the market goes against you. Let's say you buy a market at a price of 1000 and set a stop order to sell at 950. If the price rises to say 1100, you stand to make a profit of 100 when you sell. But if the price goes down unexpectedly, to 950 or lower, the trade automatically closes at 950 and the maximum you lose is 50. Diversification is another way to reduce your risks. Instead of putting all your money on a single trade, if you spread your money on a number of trades, it may be less risky. Some traders reduce their risk by combining trades. Let's look at an example concerning the NASDAQ and S&P markets in the United States. These markets tend to be correlated. On a particular day, Larry Barton believes the price of NASDAQ will go up higher than the price of other markets in the US. He decides to buy the NASDAQ, but he also sells the S&P, betting that this market will go down. 
In other words, he combines a long position on the Nasdaq with a short position on S&P. While he expects Nasdaq to outperform the other markets, he is protecting himself against the risk of a dramatic fall in both these markets. The past performance of a market does not guarantee its future results. You may find it useful, however, to track a market for a while and get a feel for its volatility. This may help you identify trends and decide how much money you are willing to risk. Also, it's a good idea to start trading with systems that use play money. This will help you gain confidence and develop your trading style without any risks. When you are ready to trade with real money, it is always advisable to bet with small amounts and with money you can afford to lose if the markets do not move as you expect. Let us now study next topic, management of risk. Risk management is a process of thinking systematically about all possible risk, problems or disaster before they happen and setting up procedure that will avoid the risk or minimize its impact or cope with its impact. It is basically setting up a process where we can identify the risk and set up a strategy to control or deal with it. It is also about making a realistic evaluation of the true level of risk. The chance of a tidal wave taking out annual beach picnic is fairly slim. The chance of groups bus being involved in a road accident is a bit more pressing. Why should we bother with risk management? There are a number of reasons why a community or non-profit group should put some time into considering risk management and it does go beyond the recent issue of rising insurance premiums. These are for own safety, for the safety of the people we are trying to help, the threat of possible litigation for own safety. Everybody wants an atmosphere where everyone in group feels safe and secure and knows their safety and security is one of the paramount consideration in every activity of group undertakes. A group that does this is normally a group that boasts a happy, loyal and effective membership or volunteer force. For the safety of the people we are trying to help, the mission of most community group is to help people, not harm them. If we are providing services for outside clients or groups, the aim is to enhance their lives, not to do something that causes them pain, either physical or mental. The threat of possible litigation in the current circumstances, this is a very real threat. Litigation is increasing as are the size of the payouts for people who successfully sue. Not every group has faced legal actions and not everyone who gets hurt then sues over it. But by setting up a risk management strategy, it can reduce the chance of people taking costly legal action against that will financially hurt the organization. Benefits to managing risk. Risk management provides a clear and structured approach to identifying risk. Having a clear understanding of all risks allows an organization to measure and prioritize them and take the appropriate action to reduce losses. Risk management has other benefits for an organization including saving resources, time, assets, income, property and people are all valuable resources that can be saved if fewer claims occur. Protecting the reputation and public image of the organization, preventing or reducing legal liability and increasing the stability of operation, protecting people from harm, protecting the environment, enhancing the ability to prepare for various circumstances, reducing liabilities, assisting in clearly defining insurance needs. An effective risk management practice does not eliminate risk. However, having an effective and operational risk management practice shows an insurer that the organization is committed to loss reduction or prevention. It makes the organization a better risk to insure. Role of insurance in risk management. Insurance is a valuable risk financing tool. Few organizations have the reserve or funds necessary to take on the risk themselves and pay the total cost following a loss. Purchasing insurance, however, is not risk management. A thorough and thoughtful risk management plan is the commitment to prevent harm. Risk management also addresses many risks that are not insurable, including brand, integrity, potential, loss of tax exempt, status for volunteer, groups, public, goodwill, and continuing donor support. Why manage your risk? An organization should have a risk management strategy because People are now more likely to sue. 
Taking the steps to reduce injuries could help in defending against a claim. Courts are often sympathetic to insured claimants and give them the benefit of the doubt. Organization individuals are held to very high standards of care. Moving to next topic, let's talk about risk financing technique. Risk managers create value through a host of prevention, reduction, enablement, and enhancement projects. Yet, despite their best efforts, undesired losses and inadequate return on investment do occur. Even when the desired speculative outcomes result, the projects must be funded. So financing these outcomes as a realistic component of a comprehensive risk management portfolio containing both risk control and risk financing components. There are three risk financing techniques which are retention, commercial, insurance, contractual transfer for risk financing, retention. Risk retention is a preferred risk financing method when the loss of values are relatively low. An important advantage of using retention is that it encourages the organization to adopt loss prevention projects thus reducing the total cost of risk. There are five common categories of retention. Current expensing. This is appropriate when the probability of lost and the expected loss value is relatively low. Relatively small speculative project costs are also expense on the current income statement. That is, these small costs are not material to the organization liquidity. Many firms have a special fund set aside to pay these little investment or claims, current expense funds. The expense of these losses is taken as a tax deductible to expense on the income statement. Borrowing. When slightly larger projects or losses but still with low probabilities occur, the preferred risk financing method is borrowing. There are typically two methods to obtain cash to pay for these losses. First, for a nominal fee, the firm can obtain a letter of credit from a bank or other financial institution that promises to provide cash if certain contingencies occur. Second, the firm can issue bonds to obtain cash to rebuild a building or finance other assets. Reserving, this reserve is a claim on assets for future expected losses or project cost. Reserves are appropriate when the loss values are low but the likelihood of loss is made. This method informs user of the financial statements that these losses are expected. To set up a reserve, the firm places an appropriate amount, usually the expected value of loss plus a certain multiple of the standard deviation on the right-hand side of the managerial balance sheet. State Qualified Self-Insurance Plan, SIP. Some states permit firms to set up this special form of a funded reserve. The regulation for these schemes are different in every state. A risk manager should consult with an expert if interested in this idea, sometimes used for financing a firm's workers, compensation statutory obligation, state qualified SIPs, require the firms to file an application, provide evidence of adequate financial resources and comply with various reporting rules. Commercial insurance. Commercial insurance is insurance for a business. In fact, it is one of the most important investment a business owner can make as it can be instrumental in protecting a business from potential loss caused by unforeseen and unfortunate circumstances. This insurance can provide valuable protection against such things as theft, property damage and liability. It can also provide coverage for business interruption and employee injuries. A business owner who chooses to operate a business without insurance puts his enterprise at risk of losing money and property in the wake of an unfortunate event. In some situations, a business owner may even place personal money and property at risk by failing to secure adequate coverage. Contractual Risk Transfer Contractual risk transfer is a one-of-a-kind resource to help draft rock solid risk transfer and insurance clauses for construction contracts, leases, purchase orders, or rental agreements, oil and gas drilling, and production contracts, and many other contractual agreements. It empowers contract drafters with model clauses using up-to-date insurance terminology rather than the ambiguous and archaic language. Discussions and summaries of state statutes affecting contractual indemnity help to assure that whole harmless clauses will be enforceable. Objective of Risk Management A primary objective of risk management is to identify and to manage, take preventive steps to handle the uncertainties that attend a business enterprise or that are personal to an individual.
regardless of the entity business or personal which or whose risk is being managed there are several primary ways to do it recognize that there is panoply of risks that attend any action and be prepared to the extent possible to withstand the financial impact of them this is essentially the theory behind self insurance minimize the chances of the adverse even occurring by implementing and enforcing safety measures areas of risk management risk management is an essential part of the management of business training and good management effective risk management is one of the most appreciated qualities of good leadership effective managers and small business owners to understand that the culture of risk management should be an integral part of their business enterprise risk management the underlying premise of enterprise risk management is that every entity exists to provide value for its stakeholders all entities face uncertainty and the challenge for management is to determine how much uncertainty to accept as it strives to grow stakeholder value uncertainty presents both risk and opportunity with the potential to erode or enhance value enterprise risk management enables management to effectively deal with uncertainty and associated risk and opportunity enhancing the capacity to build value value is maximized when management sets strategy and objectives to strive an optimal balance between growth and return goals and related risk and efficiently and effectively deploys resources in pursuit of the entity's objectives Enterprise risk management encompasses aligning risk, appetite, and strategy. Management considers the entity's risk appetite in evaluating strategic alternatives, setting related objectives, and developing mechanism to manage related risk, enhancing risk response decision. Enterprise risk management provides the rigor to identify and select among alternative risk responses, risk avoidance, reduction, sharing, and acceptance. reducing operational surprises and losses entities gain enhanced capability to identify potential events and establish responses reducing surprises and associated costs or losses identifying and managing multiple and cross enterprise risk every enterprise faces a myriad of risks affecting different parts of the organization and enterprise risk management facilities effective response to the interrelated impacts and integrated responses to multiple risk components of enterprise risk management enterprise risk management consists of eight interrelated components these are derived from the way management runs an enterprise and are integrated with uh, the management process internal environment The internal environment encompasses the tone of an organization and sets the basic for how risk is viewed and addressed by an entity's people including risk management philosophy and risk appetite integrity and ethical values and the environment in which they operate objective setting objectives must exist before management and can identify potential events affecting their achievement enterprise risk management ensures that management has in place a process to set objectives and that the chosen objectives support and align with the entity's mission and are consistent with its risk appetite risk management activities monitoring and measuring extends to the evaluation of culture performance and preparedness of the organization the scope of activities covered by monitoring and measuring also includes monitoring of risk improvement recommendation and evaluation of the embedding of risk management activities in the organization as well as routine monitoring of risk performance indicators benefits of erm some of the benefits of enterprise risk management erm include more effective strategic and operational planning planned risk taking and the proactive management of risk greater confidence in decision making and achieving operational and strategic objective greater stakeholder confidence enhanced capital raising and risk based capital efficiency enhanced organizational resilience dealing effectively with disruptions and losses minimizing financial impact on the organization risk management and business continuity business continuity management is a holistic business approach that includes a policies standards frameworks and procedures for ensuring that specific operation can be maintained or recovered in a timely fashion in the event of disruption
Its purpose is to minimize the operation, financial, legal, reputational and other material consequences arising from disruption. Business continuity management also defined as a holistic management process that identifies potential impacts that threaten an organization and provides a framework for building resilience and the capacity for an effective response that safeguards the interests of its key stakeholders, reputation, brand and value creating activities. Risk management information system. The fundamental precept of information security is to support the mission of the organization. All organizations are exposed to uncertainties, some of which impact the organization in a negative manner. In order to support the organization, IT security professionals must be able to help the organization management understand and manage these uncertainties. Managing uncertainties is not an easy task. Limited resources and an ever-changing landscape of threats and vulnerabilities make completely mitigating all risk impossible. Therefore, IT security professionals must have a tool set to assist them in sharing a commonly understood view with IT and business manager concerning the potential impact of various IT security related threats to the mission. This tool set needs to be consistent, repeatable and cost effective and reduce risk to a reasonable level. Risk management is nothing new. What is risk with respect to information system? Risk is the potential harm that may arise from some current process or from some future event. Risk is present in every aspect of our lives and many different disciplines focus on risk as it applies to them. From the IT security perspective, risk management is the process of understanding and responding to factors that may lead to a failure in the confidentiality, integrity or availability of information system. IT security risk is a harm to a process or the related information resulting from some purposeful or accidental event that negatively impacts the process or the related information. Risk is a function of the livelihood of a given threat source exercising a particular potential, vulnerability and the resulting impact of that adverse event on the organization. Threats. The potential for a threat source to exercise accidentally trigger or intentionally exploit a specific vulnerability. Threat sources. The threat sources are either intent and method targeted at the intentional exploitation of vulnerability, a situation and method that may accidentally trigger vulnerability. The threat is merely the potential for the exercise of a particular vulnerability. Threats in themselves are not action. Threats must be coupled with threat sources to become dangerous. This is an important distinction when assessing and managing risk since each threat source may be associated with a different likelihood which as will be demonstrated affects risk assessment and risk management. It is often expedient to incorporate threat sources into threat. Managing risk in agriculture is not a new concept as the agricultural industry is inherently volatile. Agricultural producers are vulnerable to the positive and negative impacts of consumer demands, weather, public policy and water and pesticide regulation which all can have tremendous influence on the success of the operation. Understanding the types of risks and the tools to manage these risks is just as important to the producers as knowing how to grow the commodities. The risk management and farm service agencies both have risk management programs available to agriculture producer, but they vary in assistant methods. In general, the risk management agency RMA manages the USDA crop and livestock insurance products provided to agriculture producer, while the farm service agency FSA manages the USDA disaster assistance programs available to agriculture products. The RMA assists in the development and underwriting of the crop insurance programs which are then sold by private insurance companies with premium subsidies provided to the agriculture producer. The FSA programs are developed and delivered directly by the agency. The main two types of insurance available to producer are multi peril crop insurance MPCI, crop revenue insurance or crop revenue covered CRC, multi peril crop insurance MPCI, multi peril crop insurance covers the broad perils of drought, flood, insects, disease, etc. 
which may affect many insured parties at the same time and present the insurer with excessive losses. To make this class of insurance, the perils are often bundled together in a single policy, an MPCI policy. Crop Revenue, Coverage CRC. Crop Revenue coverage is a combination of crop yield insurance and price insurance. The policy plays an indemnity if the combination of the actual yield and the cash settlement price in the futures market is less than the guarantee. Did you know? The RMA operates and manages the Federal Crop Insurance Corporation, FCIC, and was created in 1996. The FCIC was founded in 1938. Now, in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Risk management provides a clear and structured approach to identifying risk. Risk managers create value through a host of prevention, reduction, enablement, and enhancement projects. The internet is an excellent resource for finding insurance agent. Information about agents can also be found through local business networking organization. Risk is the potential harm that may arise from some current process or from some future event. The ERM and environmental risk analysis and assessment should not be confused with ecological risk analysis and assessment.